Yeah, yeah. Palm trees and fast cars living in my backyard. It's the prettier things until we black. First is my league, the quarterback is way more valued than most leagues. So if you're playing a standard league where you get four points and, you know, you get uh, four points for a touchdown, you know, minus two for interception, I think you get like two points for every hundred yards that you throw for. Basically, you get fucked off, fucked over as a quarterback. The amount of points that you get as a running back or a wide receiver is so much greater than the than the amount of points you get for a, a quarterback. But regardless, you know, quarterbacks have a lot better opportunity to score points because they're throwing the ball every down. So I totally understand. I get that aspect. But for me and for my league, we value the quarterback position a little bit more than your standard fantasy football league. You can hate it. You can not like it. I don't really give a fuck. All I'm trying to say is it's probably going to affect how, how you see when I'm talking about these guys, like saying you might have to go for this guy this round. I'm probably kind of doing it accordingly to my league, not, you know, your league. So just understand that, you know, take about two rounds off of every – if I say take Rodgers round fucking three, you probably should take Rodgers about round five. So just take two rounds off, you know. Uh, that's probably the difference between my league and a, and a standard league. So let's talk about the quarterbacks. Enough of this bullshitting. So Aaron Rodgers, I like Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is number one. Obviously, he every time he gets sacked, he lands on his shoulder. He breaks his collarbone. I've seen it. Done, I've seen him do it twice in his career. Um, I think he's going to have a good year, and I think he's going to be healthy. You know, every about three years, he's had this this collarbone injury. So I think he. I think he'll go back to playing a little bit scared a little hesitant you know where he's not trying to get hurt again um if that's a good word for it or not but it, regardless Rodgers is number one you're gonna have to go for Rodgers probably round three yeah, like somebody will probably grab him by round three he's just one of those guys that and if you try to think that everybody's thinking like you and that okay we'll let Rodgers fall and fall and fall until he comes to a point where I'm going to take him. That's not how it, it's good to look at Rodgers. you got to take Rodgers when you can, but you don't want to reach for him. You know, you want to get your running back and your wide receiver in those first two rounds. You want somebody else to bite on Rodgers. But going for him round three, I think, is all right. Now, other leagues, like what I'm saying, that, and that's in my league. Other league, and I said Rodgers went round one or two last year in my league. So Rodgers round four, round five, that's a time if you want to solidify your quarterback position – Go ahead and do it with getting Rodgers. Deshaun Watson is number two on my list. You know, just the output that he had last year. You know, we'll see if he can bring back the kind of play that he was having last year. But his upside was too high last year to let him, you know, go to – if he's sitting there for you in that fifth, sixth round area, he's going to be a guy that gets rushing touchdowns just as passing touchdowns. So think of it in the Russell Wilson uh, kind of, you know, in that kind of – esque way so i think deshaun watson is going to be a good two-way player you know running and passing um and now what's hard is you know do you take watson who's a little bit more of a risk or do you take a more of a, a solid guy he's probably not going to have the year that he's had in the past but he's going to have like a solid year for you and i'm talking about tom brady you know and that's your decision if you want to go high risk high reward go for deshaun watson if you want you know if you want a solid pick go for tom brady you know a guy that's going to be consistent for you all year but brady does not put up the numbers that he used to put up so just understand that he's still a top five quarterback uh because he is consistent week to week but you know i you know he's it, getting up there in age uh, Drew Brees. Drew Brees is another good option. Now he does get a lot of his touchdowns taken away because of that running game. So that's something to realize. There's weeks where Brees has really good weeks where he's asked to do a little bit more, and there's weeks where he's really asked to do nothing, and he he does absolutely nothing for your team. So he's a guy that you got to kind of watch too. He's going to be a consistently good quarterback for you, but is he going to be? Um, you know, he's not a guy that you're going to want to just break the bank on. You're not going to want to go after him round four, round five. You know, if he falls to you at six, seven, eight, that's a time period where you can take a breeze. Brady's going to be gone by then. So I guess in my philosophy and fantasy, try to get a guy at an undervalued spot. So, you know, if you're not feeling that great about a guy, but you can get him later in your draft, don't feel bad about doing it then. You know, a guy that I'm really high on this year that I'm probably going to be targeting in fantasy is Kirk Cousins. I think Kirk Cousins is going to have a lot of short fields. I think he's going to have playmakers all around him. Um, and I think he's, he's going to be a 
the playmakers around him is going to be a huge improvement compared to the playmakers that were around him in Washington. And I think you're going to be able to see that this year. Um, and so Cousins is a guy that I'm really high on. To me, he's under the radar because there's the guys that know the NFL and they understand how good Kirk Cousins can be. And then there's the general NFL fans that just watch media type shit and, and hear about Kirk Cousins on ESPN. And, and they consider Kirk Cousins as a mediocre middle of the road quarterback. And that's not how I feel about Cousins. I think Cousins is in a great spot this year with Minnesota. And so I think I, I Cousins is the guy I'm targeting. And when I say that, if if someone's going to go after him round four, round five, I'm not I'm not going to break the bank and go after Cousins. But if, if I can go round six, round seven, round eight, kind of the area where I got Russell Wilson last year, I'll do it. You know what I mean? But I'm not I'm not breaking the bank on, on Kirk Cousins. Russell Wilson's talking about him. I think it, this is a tough grade on him. You know, he played really good last year. He threw tons of passing touchdowns. He had tons of rushing touchdowns. He's a dual threat guy. Um, my thing is, is, and I think his offense is going to be fine. He still has Doug Baldwin. He's, he might have a better running game this year. I just, it, to me, it's hard. It's hard to trust the Seahawks this year, um, with the direction that their team's going. So I'm a little bit hesitant about Russell Wilson, but he, he may be fine as a fantasy player. So he's a guy to watch. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm closely watching Wilson. And I, but the thing is, I think someone's going to go for him way too early. If you go for him round four, round five, just like cousin, if you go for him too early, then it kind of defeats the purpose. It, the thing that I love about drafts is if I can get guys at spots where I think I should draft them at. You know, if, if you like last year, I I had to draft Kareem Hunt in the second round because I knew somebody in my draft was going to go after him their second pick, and. Kareem Hunt was a guy in most leagues, if you play with a bunch of idiots, you could have got Kareem Hunt probably round six, round seven, round eight, if you play with a bunch of idiots. But if you play with guys that know what the fuck they're doing, they're going to go and grab those guys that that are diamonds in the rough. Like, they see them, you know? So, and I had to go after Hunt round two last year. So, it was kind of, I kind of got fucked. Like, Hunt would have been a good, Hunt would have been a good guy if you could have just stole them round four. You know, that would have been a time period to get them. But, breaking the bank for him at round two it just it did not pan out now you say well he had a really good year last year he's like one of the most talked about fantasy people from last year well maybe if you watch fucking matthew barry who was all over his dick for the whole year but if you look at his numbers he hit a spell at the end of the year where he fucking sucked so you know he had a good out point of he had a out total of good good amount of points on the year but as far as I want a guy that's consistent week after week, Alvin Kamara was consistent week after week after week. That's who I wanted. I didn't want, I didn't fucking, I don't want Kareem Hunt, dude. Y'all, like, y'all can have him. Fuck Chief Nation as well. Um, so then Cam Newton, I like Cam Newton, you know, dual threat. You know, he's going to get the rushing touchdowns as he gets the passing touchdowns. So that's a key there to add in. Now, now he doesn't ever throw for that many yards. So standard wise, Newton is a little bit more of a hesitant, but if you know, if you're, he's scoring the rushing touchdowns with the passing touchdowns, then he's going to help you out a little bit more. He's a middle of the road guy. Round 10 is my target for Newton. If you can get, if you can let Newton fall to 10. Now I know these numbers you're thinking, there's no way Newton's going to fall to 10. Just watch, just watch the guys. Don't, don't go for a guy too early. Wait for them to fall to you. And if they don't fall to you, move on to the next option. There's always another option, you know? And we've talked about it. if you can't get, you know, if you didn't get cousins in round six or seven, you know, if you did, then we're going for Newton in round nine, 10. Um, okay. Let's say, let's say Newton's gone. It's round nine, round 10, Jared Goff, Jared Goff had an awesome year last year. His interception to touchdown or his touchdown to interception ratio was four to one. It was up there with like Brady with, with Wilson. Um, now they ran the ball a little, a little bit. And now he, he threw for a good amount of yards too last year. He was a guy that was a waiver wire. Nobody drafted him. And he's a top 10 guy for me. I like Jared Goff. It's one of those situations, if I don't get a quarterback, if it's round nine, round 10, I need one. I am not afraid to draft to draft Jared Goff. Jimmy Garoppolo. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is going to have a huge year. He's a guy that I'm not afraid to draft. Honestly, with the quarterbacks, the way they are, with people like Goff and, and Garoppolo, I'm high on Stafford. I like Phillip Rivers, Matt Ryan. When With those guys, Andrew Luck, with those guys late, with you have the ability to go for them late, I would I would not draft a quarterback early and I would wait for those 9 to 10 11 rounds to see which guys are left because you got to think about it there's 12 guys in your league for the most part 11 you haven't taken a quarterback it's round 9 eight of the guys are gone so that may, basically means 
you are competing with like four, maybe three to four other guys. And then obviously the guys that draft two quarterbacks like idiots, but that's fucking retarded. Um, unless you get a, a mediocre bad guy, like a nine to 11 round guy. So then um, Guapolo, I think is good. So then, so it, what I'm saying is you don't have to break the bank and get one of those top guys. If you don't get one of those like top three or four guys, then just wait till like not round nine through 12 and get you a quarterback, get you one of those high risk, high reward quarterbacks, Guapolo, Goff. I like Matthew Stafford. They're always playing from behind. Stafford's constantly having to make comebacks. So I like them. They're constantly throwing the ball. And so I think they may be a little bit more run based this more this year. So Stafford's value may go down. But I've liked what I've seen out of Stafford. There's a lot of people that don't like Stafford. So I think you can get Stafford late as well. Um, Phillip Rivers is one of my sleepers that I like. I like Phillip Rivers. Same as Guapolo and Goff. You can get them late. He's got good receivers around him. He's a veteran. Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan's a, a sleeper. He's kind of, you know, in the middle of the pack type guy. And I like Matt Ryan. He's got a good receiving core. Um, you know, they're they're constantly in close games. So I think that that he's not a bad fantasy pick. Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck's coming off an injury. This is a guy that was a top five fantasy quarterback, you know, the last two, you know, maybe two years ago. And he's coming off injury, so you have to deal with that. But, I mean, think about it. What if you get Andrew Luck playing, you know, all right this year? That could be a good steal late in your draft for your quarterback position. Eli Manning, you know, Eli Manning is like back, like out of the top 25 of fantasy quarterbacks when – yeah, he's not elite, but he's a good quarterback, and he has good weapons around him. The Giants have completely revamped their running game in their offensive line, and their receiving core was completely depleted last year. I think Eli Manning is a guy you watch week one, week two, week three. He could be a real steal in fantasy. And then Mariota is my other guy, you know, new offensive coordinator. They're supposedly working on his feet work. He's a dual threat type guy, so he can get the running touchdowns as well as the passing. He's a guy I'm watching – waiver wire maybe draft him he's a guy I drafted I think last year wasn't really too happy with him you know I, I drafted him in those you know, nine to 12 rounds and I wasn't really happy with him I don't think I ended the year with him um but that he's a, he's a guy that's not going to get drafted most people are like okay we've had enough of this guy he's not a fantasy quarterback so like they kicked him to the curb and he's a guy I'm kind of watching the, the Titans are going to have a good defense this year an improved running game um, you know, they'll have Corey Davis healthy all year. So we'll see what happens with that. Some busts that I'll bust in the sense of, I just don't, I'm not sold. I'm not, I'm not sold on their situations. Uh, Keenum, I don't, I don't like Keenum. I wouldn't draft Keenum. You know, if you can get him real late or waiver wire him, I think Keenum, I, I just, you know, I don't, I don't think it's going to be like it was in Minnesota. Uh, Alex Smith, I don't think it's going to be like last year. You know, he had a really good year last year. He's a waiver wire guy to me. Uh, Winston, you know, Winston's going to miss the four, first four weeks. If if Winston's a guy that you like, you know, keep him on the watch. You know, after those four weeks of suspension, he could be a, he could be an all right player. Dak Prescott, I don't like. They run the ball too much. He's just a game manager. And I wouldn't say, and then like my other thing is, so okay, this is my idea for if you get an, a quarterback in the 9 to 12 range, um, and you don't, it's a high risk, high reward guy. You get Jared Goff, you get Jimmy Garoppolo. How about for that last round or the second to last round, we go after Pat Mahomes, you know, now there might be some crazy motherfuckers that are like, I'm going for Pat Mahomes. So he's going to be my, I'm going to drop him like 13th round and he's going to be my quarterback for the rest of the year. Okay. Y'all fucking can do that. You have fucking fun with that. To me, I'll put him on my bench as a guy that maybe ends up having like some good weeks or you know maybe pans out, maybe if I need a spot start. But I'm watching Pat Mahomes if I don't have a good quarterback because he could be a guy that is like a sleeper type, but I'm not really I'm not really sold on it. I don't I don't know. Yeah. Same things, all my niggas in the streets, smoking, trying to maintain.